Luke Garrett and Bill Wang ready to go head to head in this best of five sets of first to three solves. Competitors will alternate starting solves and starting sets. Luke, with the faster median in the previous round, chose to start second. I do find it very interesting how like every competitor has a has a different way of choosing whether they want to start first or second, whether they look at the opponent's times or not. It is a very interesting thing in Monkey League that you don't see in other cubing events. Yeah, and the cubers are still developing the uh, the best practices every season. And Bill's starting off with a smooth 641 here. No nonsense. Not the best cases, but a very solid solve to start. Yeah, a very basic C-fop there, but um, turning very consistently and good look ahead too. Let's see how Luke will start with his first solve. Oh, and he's very fluid, but I lock up just as I speak, and another one. And still a mid six, but not quite fast enough against Bill's 6.4. Yeah, he had a very good start to that solve there, and a solid PLL, but the last slot on OLL just, just wasn't, wasn't on par with uh, what he needs to get. Yeah, the two competitors had similar efficiency, but uh, Bill was just more smooth with the execution. Very long solution from Luke there. His turning was, was solid, but uh, somehow he's still got a 7.2. Yeah, and if you don't bring the efficiency, TPS won't save you. There is a limit to how many moves you can have in your solve. And this does look to be challenging. Bill's spending quite a long time to find a start here. But he does seem to be resolving it decently. It won't be good enough though. A mid seven for Bill. And Luke taking the second solve. Uh, not a great start for both of these guys. They've got very similar mediums. Um, and they're going to be looking to kind of pick up the efficiency because both of them have had not so great solves. And the smooth ZBLL recognition by Bill throwing down a 594. Yeah, Luke's going to struggle to beat that at his current performance. That was a very nice recognition and execution for that ZBLL from Bill. Some massive hesitation for Luke in the early stages, and he wasn't even on to OLL by the time he needed to beat, and Bill easily taking the third solve. And Luke does seem choppy. Perhaps struggling with some nerves. We don't yeah, the usually... TPS, the TPS towards the end of that F to well there was kind of ridiculous, but you just did so many moves, it didn't even matter. Yeah, and just a lot of pauses as well. It doesn't matter how fast you turn, but if you pause in between those turns, your effective turn speed is quite low. The bill is honestly quite choppy as well, but smooth enough to take the first set three to one. Um, this is the smooth solving we were expecting. Oh. And there's some massive wow. lockups in that solve, but still a nice sub six. And that's just some classic Luke Garrett speed. Yeah, that, um, that was a really solid solve and was looking like a low five until the APA. Oh, and Bill is really fast. Does he have the ZB in time? Oh, it wasn't the right ZB for Bill. I don't think he, he had it, even if we did have the right CB. It would have been pretty close, but yes, very solid soul from Luke there. Um, hopefully you can keep that up. Oh, and this is another efficient F2L by Bill. And he's just going for OLL PLL on that ZB case, and a mid-six. 
So again, very solid. Yeah, I think he made sure to force himself an EP a little there, so he uh, just had a U-Pam. But yeah, it does, doesn't seem like he knows all of the LZBLLs. Looks like he's trying to remember it here. Then Luke messing up his F2L. <laughs> PLL skip coming at the wrong time. And that's rough for Luke because he had some fantastic efficiency, but he was just a bit hesitant in the transitions, and those pauses cost what could have been a much faster solve. Yeah, it's still going to be hard for Bill to beat that, though, because it didn't seem like too great of a scramble. Bill's F2 is fantastic. Oh, but this Whoa. LZB again, he doesn't know the cases, and he can't get them done quite quick enough. Yeah, second solve wasn't too great, but the first and the third solves were, yeah, were pretty on point, even with the lockup in the first. Eight seconds. Oh, and that was a fantastic F2L by Bill. Smoothly transitioning into the unfortunate PLL case, but still a 616. And if Luke can be brilliant here, he'll be able to take the set. And that's Luke Garrett's speed. Brilliant indeed. Whoa. A 532 with fantastic speed and efficiency. Tying up the match 1 1. Yeah, very impressive solving from Luke now. Um, hopefully, you can keep up the, uh, the solving even after the breaks ended because, yeah, he, he's got to keep it up. Even with some lockups in that solve, it was still, yeah, very fast. A nice cross plus one for Bill. Some struggles in the second half of the solve and leaving the door open for Luke. And low sevens are going to be pretty easy to beat for both these competitors if they know they need to beat it. The question is, is Luke looking at the times? And that's a huge lockup for Luke and it's still going to be good enough. Taking the first solve. <laughs> that was an interesting race there. Bill, um, actually knowing the, the ZBLL this time, but having a bit of a hesitation on the third pair. And then Luke with a really lucky OLL, but um, still managing to, to get sub seven. Luke's turning is just so quick and precise now. With the low six. Yeah, he's he's definitely on point now. If I was Bill, I'd be thinking about taking a timeout to try and to try and stop Bill's uh, loops a good solving. So. And loot and Bill has fallen apart here. He's not going to be happy with that. Seems like he tried to do some fancy keyhole stuff and it just didn't quite work out. Oh, and that was a non-stop solve by Bill. Yeah, the transition from OLL to PLL there was just... Yeah, it just wasn't a transition. He just went from straight one out to another. And Luke is locky, but it's so efficient. <sighs> oh. Oh. <gasps> Luke's lock up there costing him no, majorly. I think it's good, but... Oh. 
Oh, 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 oh. Luke is happy, and I'm happy too. That was an efficient solution. Just beautiful solving by Luke Garrett. And this is going to be very difficult for Bill to match. But his F2L is fantastic. Could he be turning it on at the right moment? No, the last layer case is just not favorable. And Luke's going to take this third set three to one. Someone needs some new headphones, I reckon. Wow! Oh, but a tough fourth pair for Luke. There were some brilliant moments in that solution, but on the whole, it ends up being below average. Yeah, it seemed like he tried to do like an FUF prime pair uh, for the last slot, and it really, really cost him the solve. But for Bill, this is crucial. When the doors open, can he step through? And there are a lot of pauses in this solve. And he can't. And Bill just not up to par at the moment. Even wow, against Luke's slower times. Not able to beat them. I was not expecting Bill to lose that one. If you're a Bill Wang fan, you do not like seeing this kind of solving when Luke's leaving the door open. A nice white cross there, but we're making good use of it. He's gonna get some tough last layer cases into a 635, but this white cross is fast. Let's see what Luke can do with it. You know, on these easier crosses, it comes down to what you do with the ensuing pairs. And Luke is a bit locky. But he doesn't have the ZB. A, a collapse for Luke. Looks like he made a, uh, one or two wrong moves there during his ZB, and it messed up the entire thing. And again, Luke with a lot of rotations and a locky PLL. Perhaps the nerves yeah, messing him up as the pressure mounts and he gets closer to victory. Yeah, Luke Seafop is very basic. He don't think he knows any ZBLL because he got a U case there, which uh, most Cubans his speed usually know, but I think he just likes to stick to the basics. And Bill with some very nice turning there to throw down his 623. And put himself in good position to tie up this match. Recognizing the ZBLL there, uh, but not a great execution. He's gonna uh, lay down a 7.2, so it should be pretty easy for Luke to beat this here and tie up the set 2 2. Oh, and quick turning by Luke, but a huge stall. And just in time again, Luke with a 6.9. Gonna be 2 2. Luke only needing one more solve to win the match, or Bill could take this solve and tie it up to two sets to two. Oh! oh! And Luke was looking so composed until the fumble and still throwing down a sub six. He would have had it set right there. If he didn't fumble, that would have been a low five and there would have been no shot for Bill to beat that. Bill has to be clutch here. Oh! oh. 
Oh. Wow. Oh, it's tough for Bill. Just missing the needed time. And Luke Garrett's going to win the match 3-1, to one, taking the final set 3-2. to two. Wow, that was really up and down. And a tied median for both competitors. Yeah, we saw, a 676 we, median. We saw a tied median in the last match as well. So competitors going neck and neck in every match this season. All right, so why don't we get started? Uh, great to be back. Great to hear Chris Mill's voice. And uh, you guys had a, a pretty close four set match. Uh, can you guys tell me uh, how you felt during, uh, during that race? Yeah, uh, so I was very nervous as I usually am for these. And uh, like the first set, I don't know, it. Like, my fingers just weren't working very well. I'm not really sure what was going on, but in the last, like, three sets, I was able to turn well and, like, get some actually pretty good times for me. Gotcha. And, uh, Bill, how did you feel uh, throughout this, this pretty tight battle? Yeah, it was a close and fun match. I think um, Luke definitely improved throughout the match, so that's why he started winning more towards the end, and for me, I solved a lot better than last time, so that's good. Um, but uh, I can do better, I guess, as well. So, yeah. Of course. So, yeah, throughout the match, uh, a lot of the people in the chat saw you guys express a lot of frustration with some of the solves, but also be really excited about some of the other better solves. So uh, one question I have is, uh, personally, what makes a solve feel good to you? Uh, just if I, like, don't lock up in the solve, or, like, I mean, pretty, like, major lockups, I guess, but, and I guess it's, like, efficient or something. I'm, I'm not really sure, but, yeah, just no major lockups, and it's just smooth, and I think that's good. Mm -hmm. um, for me, if I see a lot during inspection and don't mess it up right after, then that's definitely a great start, and um also like some last layer cases are really bad for me like m perms f perms stuff like that and i can't just spam like fast tps like other fast cubers because i just don't have that ability so like sometimes i just hope for a, a good case mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i saw uh some of uh these last layers the uh casters were pointing out lkcbs and some other u cases uh that I suppose they expect people to know. I personally don't know them. Uh, is there anything you can tell the chat about uh, how much of these last player cases you actually use in like a serious self? Uh, yeah, so I do know like full T, U, and L, but I learned some of the L recently. So um, it's one thing to be able to use them in practice, but when the solves actually mean something, it's a lot more difficult to to be able to recall them perfectly. So sometimes if you're not completely comfortable with the case, you'll rather just do what you're comfortable with, which is not the ZB. And yeah, that just means you have to pra practice and train them more. Gotcha. And uh, how about yourself, Luke? Uh, uh, I've been talking about learning ZBLO for like a long time now, and I've never done it. So I'm not really, I don't know. Like I know maybe like 30 20 to 30 zblos like and they're like the cases that are really easy to recognize and mm -hmm. so i'm able to do those ones well but it's only like a few so yeah yeah it's a it's a pretty big commitment uh i'm pretty past my prime but when i was cubing uh definitely if you don't learn a big chunk of it or the entire thing and you're missing cases in a set it gets really uncomfortable sometimes if you have to decide whether you know particular case in a set i don't know if you experienced that but that's been my experience so i guess if you want to learn just commit to it and uh eventually you might get it um one question i was really wondering was uh are you guys aware of each other's times when you're doing this race yeah uh we can see each other's times and that definitely plays a big role in like mm -hmm. how i'm gonna solve because if he gets like a bad solve then i'll definitely try and safety <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> yeah, and, uh, Bill, do you pay much attention to uh, what Luke's getting? Yeah, like, um, this season, I'm definitely, I just watch the other person solve. It's like, I'm happy to be a spectator as well, and also, like, <laughs> For sure. I'm not expecting to win many of these matches against people who are much better than me, so it's, like, not... I think maybe in previous times, I didn't try to look as much, um, because it might have made me more nervous, but... Gotcha. This season, I'm I'm pretty okay with it. I, I'm just uh, treating all the solves for as fun anyway. So yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I um I remember watching the first Roy Hung match against Maddie, and it was really weird for me because after the first set, he asked. Uh, I, I guess it was his father helping him who had won the first set. So to me, it kind of indicated that he did not pay much attention to what his opponent was doing. Um, so I guess people have different uh, approaches to that. Uh, on the subject of Roy Hong, he's kind of the the talk of the community right now after his ridiculous world record. Uh, he's facing off against Timon really, really soon. Uh, what predictions do you have for that upcoming match? Uh, I think that uh, Timon will win uh, just because I think he he's good at handling his nerves and it's like Ruhong's uh like second match ever right so yeah yeah so um i think timon will beat him like by a little bit but it won't be like a blowout okay maybe like a three to two or a three to one yeah yeah okay and uh what do you think bill yeah i think um it's gonna be really close for sure they're probably the two fastest um tubers maybe even like in the world right now but um, I think Timon definitely has like advantages in solves where he can use his color neutrality and his ability to see like the whole F tool in inspection, <laughs> and then he'll just be able to do better in those cases. Yeah, very interesting. Um, so I uh, we were looking at some WCA competitions at work today, and uh, I noticed Lucas signed up for uh, an upcoming competition in Ohio, right? Yeah, I am. Yeah, what are your goals for, uh, you know, WCA competitions? Uh, so my PR average is 640, and I think, like, when I'm not doing this, I'm under 6.5 most of the time. So I, I think that's just my goal, uh, just under 6.5 averages usually. But, like, if I could get, like, a sub-6 or something, because sub-6 averages are much less or they're much more common than they were uh like just a few months ago for me so yeah if i could get a sub six average that'd probably be my main goal because i do have a few competitions lined up like i have one in four days i think or like three or four days in idaho oh. nice. and then i have one in ohio and then i have like a few more after that too yeah uh we have steven wintringham working in our office uh this this summer and um he just pointed out just how ridiculous the Pyraminx lineup is for that. I guess Ohio is like the place where like all the Pyraminx solvers are. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, very exciting. And uh, Bill, what uh, competitions do you have planned, if any? Uh, none at the moment. Nothing's happening here in Canada, but I haven't been to a competition since like almost two years, like September of 2019, so... Mm. I'll just enjoy it when I get the chance. No goals. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Hey, just hang on to my records as long as possible. That's all. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe you'll surprise yourself with, uh, I guess with uh, with uh, a PB or a record. Sometimes it, it doesn't come when you really want it, and it just shows up when you're not expecting. Uh. So, yeah, that's, that's about it for me. Uh, this was a really cool match. Uh, this, I think, there's something really interesting about watching a match when um, not everything is 100% perfect because it, it's really telling to, to watch cubers try to adjust uh, to beat each other and to keep themselves in check. So um, for any cuber that... I guess is is cubing to set PBs. This is definitely you know a really good show of how to uh, yeah how to adjust yourself and uh, pull out some good times. So really glad to have uh, watched your match and uh, thank you for 
having me, Philip and Chris. Till next time. Yep, thanks for having me.